Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. In this episode, we are looking at linear external skeletal fixation, a technique commonly used for a pair of comminuted long bone fractures in small to medium sized patients. Specifically in this video, we will explain how to apply a simple type 1A linear ESF with tied in intramedullary pin using VI's standard fixator or SF system. So let's go under the skin. The patient is placed in lateral recumbency with the affected limb uppermost in a hanging limb preparation. A lateral approach to the femur is made. The IM pin should be of an appropriate size to the patient, filling approximately 30 to 50% of the medullary canal at its narrowest point, mid diaphysis, determined via measurement of preoperative radiographs. In small patients where the required pin size is less than 2 mm, an arthrodesis wire can be used instead of a Steinman intramedullary pin. A Jacobs chuck or powered drill or wire driver is required for insertion of the IM pin. Powered insertion is preferred for accuracy of pin position and direction. The intramedullary pin is placed first to restore limb length and alignment and to hold the bone segments in position for application of the ESF. Normagrade insertion of an IM pin is preferred as it gives better control of the bone entry and exit points. Holding the proximal segment of the femur using bone holding forceps, the pin is walked off the greater trochanter medially until it drops into the intertrochanteric notch. It is then driven gently into the bone, directed parallel to the long axis. Resistance will be felt at first, but the resistance should drop once the pin has fully penetrated the cortical bone of the trochanteric fossa. The pin is then driven down the medullary canal until the tip protrudes at the fracture site, mid-diaphysis. The distal femur is held with a pair of pointed reduction forceps positioned medial to lateral across the femoral condyle. Using both pairs of bone-holding forceps, the distal and proximal segments are aligned. The IM pin is advanced proximal to distal across the fracture fragments and into the medullary canal of the distal segment. Do not touch the fracture fragments during this process. As the pin engages the cortical bone of the distal femur, the bone will be seen to extend to the correct length. Driving the pin must stop as resistance is felt as the soft tissues tension. If the pin is driven further at this point, it may penetrate the distal cortex into the stifle joint. The proximal aspect of the pin is left long at this stage. A second IM pin held on the outside of the limb as a comparison allows the surgeon to check length and positioning. Once the IM pin is placed to the surgeon's satisfaction, placement of the ESF can begin. Positive threaded pins are recommended as they offer the best resistance to pull out. Pin size is determined according to preoperative measurements against the radiographs. Pin thread diameter should be 20 to 25% of the bone diameter at the intended point of insertion. The most proximal pin is placed first in the greater trochanter. A stab incision and bluntly dissected soft tissue tunnel is created for the pin. The pin tract is pre-drilled using a drill bit the same size as the pin shank or up to 20% smaller. A useful tip is to place a thin A or K wire into the hole after drilling. This will help to prevent the soft tissue from closing over the hole. The positive end thread pin is placed using a power drill at slow revolutions to minimize heat production in the bone. The threaded portion of the pin should engage both cis and trans cortices. The tip of the pin should just exit the trans cortex. With the most proximal pin now in position, the most distal pin is placed next in the femoral condyle. 
A connecting bar is chosen of the appropriate length, at least the length of the normal femur, and ideally a little longer proximally. A single standard fixator clamp is used to connect each pin to the connecting bar. The orientation of the clamp is important. The pin connecting bolt must be on the inside of the connecting bar, not on the outside. The clamp must be positioned at least one centimetre or one finger width away from the skin to allow for soft tissue swelling and to prevent irritation. Final checks are made as to femoral length and alignment. If the surgeon is happy, the proximal and distal clamps are tightened. The nut of the larger bolt is tightened, which tightens onto the connecting bar and pin simultaneously. One spanner holds the head of the bolt, a second spanner tightens the nut. The smaller bolt is then tightened to further tighten the clamp onto the connecting bar. Sequential tightening of each bolt and nut usually works best. Further pins are now placed to complete the linear ESF. These pins must be pre-drilled and placed through clamps that have been pre-loaded onto the connecting bar. This is to ensure that positioning and trajectory of the pinhole in the bone match the clamp position and orientation. In accordance with the rules of external fixation, two to four pins per bone segment should be placed, but only in safe corridors that avoid blood vessels, nerves and muscles. Pins cannot, therefore, be placed in the mid 60 to 80% of the femur due to the overlying muscles, so the remaining pins must be placed in the relatively small proximal and distal segments of bone. Depending on the configuration of the comminuted fracture, it may only be possible to place two to three pins in each bone segment. Once all the ESF pins are placed and all clamps have been tightened, the IM pin is bent laterally from the proximal femur towards the ESF. This is best achieved using a pair of pliers to hold the IM pin where it exits the skin and a Jacobs chuck applied to the free end of the IM pin. Force is applied between the pliers and the Jacobs chuck to bend the IM pin in the direction of the connecting bar. The IM pin is then attached to the connecting bar using a single clamp. The ESF pins and IM pin are cut as close as possible to the connecting bar using pin cutters and the surgical wound is closed routinely. Post-op x-rays are taken and the ESF adjusted if necessary. The sharp cut tips of the ESF pins should be covered to prevent damage to the patient, to the ESF components and the patient's environment. This video has demonstrated the use of the standard fixator, but VI also supply other ESF ranges, including KE+, FESA, and Epoxy Putty for freeform fixators. For further information on the full VI range of instruments and implants for external skeletal fixation and to view a comprehensive surgery guide on this procedure, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.